This virtual slow art presentation is an in-depth look at Mark Bradford's Los Moscos, completed in 2004. Los Moscos is owned by the Tate Gallery in London and has been loaned to the Modern Art Museum of Fort Worth as part of the End Papers exhibition, which features the early work of Mark Bradford. According to Michael Opping, the curator of the End Papers exhibition, the Tate said they would never lend Los Moscos, but somehow they were convinced to do so, and it is one of the stars of the Fort Worth show. Although it may be difficult to see on the slide, the piece is very big, approximately 10 feet by 15 feet. We will discuss Los Moscos in some detail, but before we do so, I would like you to keep in mind three words that we don't usually use to describe an artist. However, in the case of Mark Bradford, I think they will help us to understand his artistic process. They are cartographer, alchemist, and archeologist. We'll see how these words apply to Mark Bradford a bit later when we discuss Los Moscos in detail. Before we look closely at Los Moscos, it is necessary for us to know something about Mark Bradford. No artist creates in a vacuum, and this is certainly the case with Bradford. So here is Mark Bradford together with Anderson Cooper. Some of you may have seen the 60 Minutes segment in which Anderson Cooper interviews Bradford, visits his studio, and calls him one of the most important and influential artists in America today. Many critics also suggest that Bradford is today's Jackson Pollock. In fact, Anderson Cooper owns a Bradford piece entitled The Hood is Moody from 2003, which is in the first, which is in the Fort Worth show. One of the first things people notice about Bradford is that he is tall. In fact, he's almost seven feet tall. As a tall black man, people of course thought that Bradford was a basketball player. Bradford explores this stereotype in a short video in the Modern's permanent collection, in which he's filmed trying to shoot baskets in a large and unwieldy antebellum skirt. He falls down, has trouble getting up again, and never makes a basket. 59-year-old Mark Bradford was born in 1961 to a single mother who owned a beauty salon in South Central Los Angeles. He never knew his father, and for the first 11 years of his life, lived with his mother in a boarding house about 15 minutes from the beauty salon. At that time, South Central was mostly black and a fairly rough neighborhood. So when Bradford was 11, his mother moved the family to Santa Monica, a mostly white neighborhood. His mother continued to commute from Santa Monica to her beauty salon, and when he was not in school, young Mark spent a lot of time in his mother's salon as well. According to Bradford, he fell through the cracks of the educational system, but eventually earned a high school diploma and started doing hair in his mother's salon. He got his license and worked in the salon full time. Even now, as a very successful artist, he still does hair for friends. Bradford often mentions that doing hair and making art are similar endeavors and credits his work in the hair salon with helping him to become the kind of artist he is today. In a moment, we'll see just how much his early art was influenced by the beauty salon. During the 1980s, Bradford would work in his mother's salon, save his money, and travel to Europe. Of course, at night, he would frequent nightclubs, as he had done in the United States. In fact, Bradford proudly tells people he has a PhD in nightclubs. But during the day, he visited museums, where he encountered abstract expressionism and began to train his eye. Back in the States, he started to study art at Santa Monica College and eventually transferred to the California Institute of the Arts. At 30 years old, Bradford was 10 years older than most of the other students at CalArts. And in the 90s, 
the CalArts curriculum disparaged painting in favor of conceptual and performance art. Although this approach did not resonate with Bradford, he persevered and earned his BFA in 1995. He also earned an MFA in 1997. And for his MFA thesis, he embraced performance art by hiring a high school band to march into the building, cross the stage, and march out again. Clearly, this was enough for the CalArts faculty, and they awarded Bradford his MFA. He continued to work in his mother's salon while studying at CalArts, and because he didn't have a lot of money to buy art supplies, he used to buy cheap surplus paints that had been mixed incorrectly from Home Depot. In fact, he has said that if Home Depot doesn't have it, Mark Bradford doesn't need it. And this is no longer completely true, but Bradford does a lot of shopping at Home Depot. He buys white painters t-shirts and pants for himself and his assistants, the only clothes Home Depot sells, he says. And sometimes when shopping at Home Depot in the white t-shirt and pants, he's asked for his card. People think he's a house painter. He says he should probably get some cards. One day in the hair salon, he notices used end papers. Beauty salons use end papers to set hair in a permanent wave, and they were cheap. A box of 1,000 cost 50 cents back then. So Bradford started gluing end papers to sheets. Canvas was too expensive. He was trying to make grid pictures like those of one of his favorite artists, Agnes Martin. However, the end papers were so thin that they lacked definition and the grid pattern disappeared. So Bradford took to burning the edges of the end papers with a lighter. Later, he used a blowtorch, probably from Home Depot, and this allowed the edges of the end papers to be seen and the grid structure to form. He also began to dip end papers into hair dye, since there was always a little bit left over in the salon, before affixing them to sheets or later to canvas when he had enough money to buy canvas or was given canvas to use. And we can see the effect of this method of working in Enter and Exit the New Negro, also in the Fort Worth show. This piece is important because it was part of a 2001 exhibition entitled Freestyle, produced by Harlem's Studio Museum, featuring new black artists. The title of the piece, comes from a 1925 Alain Locke essay, Enter the New Negro, which declared the advent of a new black culture. And this work by Bradford is a visual manifesto for a new type of black painter. Prior to Bradford, most black painters painted figurative rather than abstract works. One of the interesting things about this piece is that it consists of layers of end papers collaged one on top of the other. Bradford even took pictures of the work in process and inserted the pictures in the work itself. Harlem Studio Museum purchased this piece. Bradford's first private sale at the age of 40 was Dreadlock's Can't Tell Me Shit, also in the Fort Worth show. In 2013, Bradford, Eileen Harris Norton, and Alan DeCastro, Bradford's longtime partner, set up a foundation, art and practice, in South Central LA. The foundation exists to serve South Central by bringing art to the community and to specifically help young people who at the age of 18 have termed out of the foster care system. Bradford personally provides the $1 million annual budget for art and practice. I can't stress enough how important his community is for Mark Bradford. He lives in South Central LA, his studio is in South Central, and art and practice is housed in the building that was once his mother's beauty salon. Over the years, he has seen South Central change demographically, 
from a predominantly black community to a multicultural community. There has been an influx of Hispanics, but there are also large Korean and Mexican populations. According to Bradford, there is an abstraction that happens in a city, a dislocation of reality, when you have a Mexican taqueria next to a black wig shop across from a Korean nail salon. And this multicultural mix is seen in the merchant posters covering the walls, fences, and boarded up buildings in Bradford's South Central neighborhood. He began using these posters in his art. He and his assistant will sometimes put on vests and put out cones when they take posters off the walls. People think they're city workers and never question them. Bradford also collects posters when he travels abroad. And he's fond of telling the story of returning from Bali with a bundle of posters. He's asked by the immigration officer why he is bringing trash into the United States. And Bradford replies, it's not trash, it's art. So let's turn to Las Moscas. Many abstract artists do not give their works titles. However, we know that that is not the case with Mark Bradford, who refers to his art as social abstraction. That is abstract art that has a social or political context clinging to the edges. Enter and exit the new Negro, dreadlocks can't tell me shit, the hood is moody. These titles are clearly important to Bradford. Los Moscos translates as the flies or the mosquitoes and is a derogatory phrase used to describe Hispanic day laborers who congregate outside of places like Home Depot looking for work. Now, before we look at the work in more detail, here is a picture of Los Angeles at night. We note the similarity when we look at Las Moscos. The work looks like a Google map based on a satellite image of a city at night. In Bradford's case, Los Angeles. Bradford is very interested in maps. He sees them as containers of people who are actually there, but invisible. Maps, he says, have to do with power. So in Los Moscos, and in many of his later works, Bradford is a cartographer, a cartographer of community. We notice that Bradford is using end papers in this work, but he's also using posters, signs, flyers, billboards that he has found in the streets surrounding his studio. He uses pop or vernacular materials from his local environment to create the experience of city life. Words and phrases appear and disappear, dislocating the viewer trying to make sense of the work. Although Bradford calls himself a painter and his works paintings, there is in fact not much, if any, paint in Los Moscos. What Bradford is doing is painting with paper. He, he says he never saw paper as paper, but rather as frozen pigment. So like an alchemist, he's turning paper into paint. His works look like paintings, but they're made mostly of paper. The radial patterns visible throughout the canvas seem to suggest helicopter blades hovering over a city, constantly under surveillance. But although we see the lights of the city, we don't see any individuals. They are invisible. The substrate of Las Moscas is shredded paper and a special black paper, probably not from Home Depot, upon which are layered bits of posters, packaging, and billboards. He wets the paper and fixes each layer with a coat of shellac. In this slide, we can clearly see the layering that has taken place. He sometimes embeds string, caulking, or rope to form linear elements. He's in fact making a collage. Then he uses an industrial sander, 
probably from Home Depot, and other implements to pull off layers and, and shape the surface, a process called decollage. Like an archaeologist, Bradford rediscovers the past as he scrapes, sands, and tears away each layer. He calls it unearthing. There is, Bradford says, improvisation, but it's not a complete surprise. I know what I put under there. I keep exacting notes. Every time I put on a different piece of paper, I take a picture and it goes into my database. I know exactly what color I put on yesterday. So when I'm sanding, I know it's a dark gray. We can get a better idea of Bradford's artistic process by watching him explain how he makes a relatively new work at the Hirschhorn Museum entitled Pickett's Charge. I'm an artist that paints with paper. I use, um, rather it's billboard paper, culled from the streets. It has a use value. Usually the materials that I have have some use value in the world. And I begin to take these materials and form what I consider paintings, sculptural paintings. So the materials in Pickett's Charge, the largest images of Pickett's Charge were images that came from the internet and that I sent them to a billboard company. And I told them to make them billboard size. I, I, I think I told them I want people to see them from the freeway. So it became pixelated and it became kind of CYMK'd. And that was the main layer. Then there's rope I used underneath them to create the line work. And store-bought paper. I would probably say that each one of the canvases has between five and 10 layers. The first layer underneath you would see is kind of a fluorescent color paint. And then I would put a string on top and then I would build it and build it. Usually each layer takes about a week to put on and dry. It's almost like a tree. The tree rings, if you cut it, you can kind of count the layers. So what is Bradford up to with Las Moscas? We know his titles are carefully chosen, so he wants us to think about the day laborers congregating outside of Home Depot. But the very individuals whom the work is intended to portray are invisible, an existing yet invisible population. Perhaps the vivid colors and bright lights of Los Angeles draw us toward the darkness and invite us to focus more closely on those living under the radar. People Bradford would see every day in central Los Angeles, but who often go unnoticed. Perhaps Los Moscos will start conversations about inclusion and exclusion, the role of political power and cultural relevance. And if it does, I think Mark Bradford would be pleased. <laughs>